Hello, what is up, and welcome back everybody to a brand new FTB Inventions video. I am back from vacation, in case you didn't know. I took a little spontaneous vacation, and I kind of just said no to electronics in the whole nine yards. Um, so we are back here, and I want to show you guys a couple things first and foremost. We're going to be working a little bit more on the machine room, um, but we're going to have to start setting up like a power room and stuff soon too. Uh, but this is what we're looking at so far these are the items that I've thought of that I need I usually need a decent amount of um, now there's a few as well that we don't have enough of um, things like planks right I just always want to have planks so I might need to do like a level emitter for or like a crafting something like that just to always have enough planks on hand but as you can see we have 2048 of pretty much all of these materials there's a couple that are still going like the electrical steel but bronze and you know glass always having glass around vibrant alloy invar all that kind of stuff and I just added this one here signalum just to always have 2048 or signal them around is pretty good now the next step is we need some enderium um, to be automated up because well that's a thing um, and I'm thinking the way that we want to go with it let's see here isn't there which one is it this one here the enderium blend is that a route I want to go or do we just want to do up the full meal deal with the alloy smelter. We might just want to do the alloy smelter, don't we? I'm thinking so. Um, the problem is this is going to require two alloy smelters. So what we're going to do there is pretty straightforward. Um, and we need to get this in Derium before we can move on to a couple of other little projects that I want to get going on this room. So let's get ourselves another alloy smelter pretty straightforward there oh and we need another octatic capacitor as well good excellent now the one thing that we're going to do sadly I don't know if I need to set up e3 in this room as well or not do you know what I mean uh, I'm a little uncertain on that one so okay that's good let's get some let's get an energy conduit Excellent. And we're just going to do this basically the same as what we've done other ones. Um, we're going to get ourselves a little bit of smart cable and an export bus. We're going to need a capacity card as well. Uh, this guy right here, just one of you. Thank you. Good. We'll take that and the export bus. Good. So that's going to go on the side here with our cabling and the capacity card. Now the first step we're going to do up here in the top one. And for that we need to get ourselves set up with the uh, Enderium base uh, for Ender IO. So this guy is two tin, silver, and platinum or shiny. All right, so tin, silver, and do we have any shiny around? No. Platinum, no. Oh boy. Okay. So we need to make some of that in our E3. Now this is the only annoying part about this setup. Until we maybe get a quarry or something like that um, up and running. Because this stuff is very expensive. Two diamonds worth per, you know, one. So not that it's really a problem. But... It's completely manual. You can't automate the E3 tablet, as far as I'm aware anyways. Maybe you can. Maybe maybe I'm just a noob. But uh, as far as I know anyways, you cannot automate it 100%. So we need to do it manually to get the shiny until we get a quarry up and running. So, oh boy, a little, little, uh, what? How did that end up in there? It's just automatically input in there? Really? Really? Really game? Okay. It's fine. It's because we just added it. No big deal. All right. We got to lock that. All right. Good. So this guy is going to get a shiny. It's going to get silver and tin. Good. So the tin, the silver, and the shiny is all going to come into here. Excellent. And that is going to get us the Enderium base. Now we're going to output that to the bottom. 
And this guy's going to accept from the top. No, no. Accept from the top. Good. As well as the side here. So this should automatically get the Enderium base once we get enough tin in there. Let's just speed this up a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get that at least producing. And we can get the Enderium base. Now, the Enderium base cooks up quite quickly. Uh, we don't need a backlog of it because it's not used in any other recipes. So this will just be our backlog, which will be one stack, which should be more than enough because we plan on having 2048 Enderium at some point in time, um, especially once we address our shiny issue. So we already have the Enderium base. The only other thing that we need is we need two other ingredients uh, to get the Enderium itself. So the Enderium itself, let's just pull it up here, was the base plus two enderpearls and pyrothium dust. All right. So what I also want to make is a crafting card. This guy right here. Go. Crafting table. Get. All right. I think this will work quite well. So we're going to get the crafting card. We're going to get a capacity card. Those are both going to go in the export bus. Um... And this is going to uh, use stocked items. Okay, to craft, yes. So we're going to make it craft pyrothium. Um, so we need to make pyrothium to be craftable in the system. So pyrothium needs to go in this, as well as ender pearls, which obviously don't require any crafting whatsoever. So those two items need to go in here to make this thing work now we don't actually have the setup or the system knowing what pyrothium is yet so we will need to set up that as a craftable item in the system overall so let's head on back now yes we could pull this out with ee3 pyrothium is actually very easy for us to pull out with our current um system it's not very expensive at all only 400 to get that out there but we do want to make it so that we can automate this process so this guy is going to be oh coal dust sulfur dust etc the coal dust is going to be a problem uh, we do not have that automated at this point in time um, so let's get a few more blaze rods in our e system good it's very it's just so easy to use the blaze rods at this point in time. So coal dust is definitely not automated at this point in time. And maybe we should automate it a little bit more. Because, well, we can. Um, so we could set up a quick sag mill to get some more of the coal dust. So in the coal dust, let's just double check here. Um, let's see. We have it as the tech reborn coal dust yeah this one right here that is not good okay all right coal dust from industrial craft uh oh okay so no seg mill there charcoal dust charcoal dust coal dust yeah okay so we can't use a seg mill we might have to set up a pulverizer um but that's going to give us the industrial craft one or no, no, we have to set up a macerator to pull that off. Or we can look at the tech reborn side and maybe automate that a little bit more. Um, hmm. Maybe we could do that in the centrifuge, something like that. Get some saltpeter and some coal dust. That might be a thing. We can maybe do that. But for now, that's going to be a little bit manual again. But what that should be getting us is that should be getting us some Enderium. So if we are looking, we are not getting Enderium in the system. Why? Oh, I locked the I locked the drawer, didn't I? Yes, I did. All right. So let's set up the drawer to have the Enderium in it. So let's take out this Enderium. Thank you. And put it in there. Good. And this is then going to output to that guy. So now we have 15 Enderium. That's great. And this is already backlogged. Even better. The Signalum is going quite nicely. So 
I guess from here, it's just a matter of upgrading the items that I want to upgrade so that we can proceed on. So I already have a little bit here. Um, let's get some Enderium gears. I need five of these. So we do need a little bit more Enderium. Let's get three for right now. Good. We'll put them all there. And what we're doing is we're actually upgrading the thermal expansion magma crucibles. And I also want to upgrade the fluid transposers here to basically the max level so that they can hold all of the augments required just to make things even faster for those items. So what those are going to hold is those are going to hold our, um, our setup of... Well, pretty much a couple different things. The Resonant Ender setup is going to be one of those. And the other one is going to be the Destabilized Redstone. So I need one more Enderium gear here. And then this will be all done. Uh, by the way, I hope to be back in action. Uh, the, the time off was, was needed. Um, I do feel that. Uh, I've also started to just... I don't know, use my brain a little bit more and put things a little bit more into perspective on the day in, day out type things and how blessed I am to have all of you guys that watch me as well as so many other things in my life like a loving family and a wife that supports me and all that kind of stuff. So I've used a lot of that time off to reflect and, and you know, just rethink things a little bit more so i hope you guys appreciate that and i hope it makes sense in the long run so what we're going to do is we're going to throw down these magma crucibles right down here like so and hmm do i want a buffer do we want a buffer here i do not know i do not know if we want a buffer do we want a buffer now you know what i don't think we need a buffer I think we will be just fine like this. Um, so I think we'll be, yeah, I think this will work just fine. So let's do this. That'll be blue, boom, and blue. All right, good. So these are all outputting to the side into the fluid transposers over here. Good. And what we need to then do is we need to get our AE system over here. So we have a line that's running right under here. Good. And let's just get ourselves a little bit further over to address this. Perfect. Okay. Good. So those guys are going to go through there. That's good. We can cover that spot up. We can put those away. And let's get ourselves a little bit more of the dense flux cable. Good. And we need some more of the smart cable. Uh, probably need a little bit more than that. Go. Excellent. And we're going to need some export buses again. What do we need here? We need three of them total. That's good. And just kind of get this thing automated and set up. So that's, again, one of the main things that I'm trying to focus on in this playthrough is getting everything fully automated and fully set up accordingly. All right, so we're going to run the dents all the way over. That's good. And then the smart cable up, just like we did for the other system. Now, we should be at, how many channels are we at here? 20 of 32. Have those activated yet? There we go. So we're at 23 of 32 uh, channels used at this current time. So we're running out of channels pretty quickly. We might actually have to need to run another dense line out here, uh, but we'll see how that goes. So these are going to be blue on the sides, like so, because they're going to be accepting the items from these exports. So the first item is, of course, an ender pearl. The next item is a redstone block. And the third item that we're going to use is, ah, uh, do we want glowstone? Hmm. Do we want glowstone or should we get like, what is a uh, gelid cryothium used for again? Um, I don't even remember. What can we use this for? Not that, this, yeah, all of this. Isn't it used for stuff? 
Don't we need it for things? Okay. Cryo stabilized flux ducts, which are very nice. Um, we could get some cinnabar packed ice. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's really about it, though. But these cryo stabilized flux ducts are pretty darn nice. Those are the infinite RF uh, flux things. Um, we don't really need it, though. And what about energized glowstone? Energized glowstone. Let's see what we can do with that. Is there really much? What is this? Lumium. Ooh. We could do lumium. Not really necessary, though, is it? Let's see. What else can we do with this? Impulse plates, which are kind of cool. Um, overall. The impulse item ducts. Glowstone illuminators. Yeah, not overly necessary. So what I think I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to remove this top one. And this one will stay open. So if we need a bit of gelid cryothium or if we need anything like that, we can actually come over here and manually use that item. So this guy's going to have the ender pearls. This guy's going to have the redstone. And it's going to automatically cook them up using a lot of RF per tick, but not as much as we can. So let's go address that issue now. So we need some augments to speed these guys up. And we can speed them up 100% fully. So let's get one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Six of these. This is where E3 is just awesome. The fact that you can basically automate this process uh, without using AE2 and get all those augments, I love it. That is amazing to me. All right, good. Uh, one person actually had a fantastic idea, and I am I do think I'm going to do it as well. Uh, so what their idea was, was to connect all of the 8,000 RF per tick. Well, bye-bye power. Um, yeah, we're going to be out of power right away. No big deal. Uh, but yeah, one of the ideas that they had was to connect up all the viaducts. So that even when I'm coming from the surface, I can automatically come down to intersection A, for example, if we so choose to do so. That is very fast. That is very good. But we are going to run out of power at surface, hands down. Because um, those also hold a lot. Okay, this might be a problem. Let's go investigate. And like I said, we will have to work on power here right away. I am thinking of going the reactant dynamo route. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I think it's I think it's a viable route, especially with soul shards um, making so much mob essence. That might be a way to go. Uh, we are currently losing fifteen thousand. We could also go what big reactor. We could go big reactor. Maybe both. Maybe both. Um, but yeah, so that is working. This system's working great. They're all producing 320 RF per tick. But obviously, that's a pretty strong loss right there. So hopefully those will finish. Uh, this is a pretty big drain on the system right now. So it's not a common drain that we're going to have all the time. But hopefully once those finish up, we will be good to go overall. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a drain. But these reactant dynamos, we could upgrade them again uh, with another augment to get even more power out of them. It might not be a bad way to go, but we are going to lose more fuel. But let's, let's do it anyways. And we're going to do a few tests, just kind of see where we're at. How many of these reactant dynamos will we need compared to a big reactor, etc.? cetera? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So I have seven total. That's not too, too bad. We should be able to make those pretty easily here in our home base. I know it's kind of a pain going back and forth. I do need to just remove all that other stuff and bring it over here and add it to the different rooms and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I 100% agree. 
Um, but we will get there soon. So the augment that we need is this guy right here. Eight times energy produced. Okay. Redstone transmission coil. I think we have that already crafted. Good. Let's put that in there. And we do not have the gelid cryothium. Do we have the cryothium in here? No, we do not. Okay. So, cryothium. Let's look that guy up. This guy right here. We need a couple different things. Snow and blizz powder. Ew. Blizz powder is... Oh, well, here's a perfect use for our new system. Getting snowballs into our setup. Okay, good. Well, we have the destabilized redstone, so let's put it to good use. So we have those. We need to get another export bus. Or no, we want an ME interface is what we want, and I'm not in the right screen. So we want a couple of ME interfaces here. And what these are going to do is they're going to allow us to get these to be craftable on our systems over here. So, our first one that we can set up is the snowballs to being blizz powder. So, we can throw that there and throw that there. Obviously, we need to connect this up to our main line over here. Not a big deal overall. We can do it quite easily. But that is going to use up more channels again. Good. And let's get our smart cable. And run it up. Okay. Okay. Good and good. All right, so that should be set up then. And the first one that we're going to do is we are going to say that one snowball equals one blizz powder. Makes sense. So we need to change this crafting pattern here to a processing pattern. And we're going to say one snowball equals one blizz powder, which we do not have. And like I said, one blizz powder. Okay, so this is a processing pattern. And these are a little bit different. But what this is going to do is now you can see we actually have a fluid transposer in here as an interface terminal. Now, I'm going to double check. I want to make sure that we're putting it in the correct fluid transposer because we do have two of them. And we don't want to have any problems. Um, let's just see. Okay, and that's going to be that. Is that right? I think that's going to work. So that'll go like that. All right. And then what we're going to want to be able to do is we're going to have snowballs in there, for example. And we're going to say we need 10 blizz powder. Go. And what should happen is it should throw the snowballs in here. Perfect. And then it should pull them out. Or not. Okay, so that pushes them out okay let's see if it works again here yeah but now we can't accept in okay hmm all right so the me interface definitely needs to be on at least that or something but then we need to get it back into the system so what i'm thinking is instead of this me interface we might want to go with the full block then like so. Uh, that'll still be the pattern in there. But instead, what we can do is we can actually put the output to the back. And we can simply then item conduit into back into the AE system, just like we've done in the past. So this is going to be extracting and inserting. So what it'll do is it should throw in the snowballs. So another 10, for example. Throw in the snowballs, and it's automatically extracting out the backside and putting it in to our system all over again. Perfect. Okay. So that's the blizz powder done. Uh, snowballs at the moment, I think, are going to be manual. Macerator extraction. Yeah, I think at the moment, snowballs will be manual until we get to a point of UU Matter from Tech Reborn, which is definitely something that I want to get to at some point in time. Um, just a matter of when that will be. All right.
good so we can put those away and that's our first setup here uh, I do want to do the same right down here before we get too carried away because I want to make sure that our systems are similar so that's going to be like that we're going to have it out the back side and we will just simply item conduit in with the others here extract always active okay good and ooh, actually do we need that to be like that yeah we might need it to be like that so that it detects that the item is being returned to that me interface so we'll disable that as well and that'll be insert that way they're their own little subsystems type thing okay good so I think that's pretty good. Now we can get the gelid cryothium. All right, so back to the crafting pattern. We get the gelid cryothium, or the cryothium dust, my bad. Um, and then that is going to go down here, like so. And that's going to give us our chiroflux, blah, blah, blah. So, chiro... All right, let's do it this way. Augment chiroflux etc etc oh we need more blank patterns as well okay no not you let's get a few more of those i must say it's really nice coming over to the side of auto crafting the way we are right now it's quite pleasant because you don't run out of stuff nearly as often which is awesome are we do we already have that much wow We've already used up that much. We're going to need to expand on our setup soon. All right. So what we can do is we can make this augment. Now, the reason I'm doing this and this, you can see here, there's no exchange value. You can't exchange this one. The other two you can, but not this one. So how many do we need again? I don't remember anymore. Uh, so I'm going to make seven because I have a feeling it was seven. Uh, so we're going to take seven of these back, and this is going to temporarily well assist in our power situation i think that's about it though i think we're pretty much at wrapping up time thank you so much for the continued support i really do appreciate it um i'm still gonna do my best as best as i can all the time for you all and myself and absolutely everybody so thank you so much again i appreciate every last one of you thank you for the subs thank you for donations Thank you for support in any way. Patreon, um, I love you all so much. It's great. So 640 RF per tick. That's pretty darn good. That's some pretty decent power right there. 640 times 7. It's a lot of power. It's a lot of power. And it doesn't look like we're blazing through the blaze powder yet. We'll see what happens with the mob essence, though. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye for now.